Swift is able to figure out what type of data is inside a variable or constant based on what we assign to it. However, sometimes you want to override the default, or you don't want to assign a value just yet, and that's where type annotations come in. So far, we've been making constants and variables like this. Let surname equals lasso, and var score equals zero. Here, Swift is using type inference. Swift infers that surname must be a string because we're assigning some text to it. Similarly, Swift infers that score must be an integer because we're placing an int into there, a whole number. Type annotations allow us to be specific about what data we want, and they look like this. Colon string equals lasso, colon int equals zero. Now being explicit, surname must be a string. The same thing it would have inferred, but it was saying it definitely is a string now. And score must be an integer. Again, the same thing it would have inferred, but now being explicit. But sometimes that isn't the same thing. For example, maybe score shouldn't be an integer. It should be a decimal. Maybe you get half points of doing stuff. So you can now say var score is a double equal to zero, and that will work. Without the colon double part, Swift would infer this thing to be an integer. But we're overriding that. We're saying, no, 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 it's definitely a decimal number. Now, we've looked at a few types of data so far. And it's important you know their names because that allows you to have the right type annotation as you progress. And so we have strings. Let player name string equals Roy. We have integers, int. Let lucky number int equals 13. We have doubles or decimals. Let pi double equals 3.141. We have bool, booleans. Var is authenticated. Is a bool equal to true? And there's our complex types, things like arrays. Albums is an array of string. The box of strings like that, equal to red and fearless. Remember, arrays must be specialized. They can't just be array by itself. It's an array of strings. Dictionaries, again, they hold lots of different values, and you decide how they're accessed, so they're specialized in two ways. It's a string, string dictionary, or a string, int dictionary, or whatever you want to store. Then there are sets, again, specialized. So we're gonna say it's a set of strings. The bluest eye, foundation, girl, woman, other, and similar. So we're specializing this as a set that holds strings. Now, knowing all these types really does matter for times when you don't want to provide initial values. For example, we could say uh, var soda is an array of strings equal to Coke, Pepsi, and Iron Brew. And the type annotation, the colon array of string part, is not needed there. Swift can see we are assigning an array of strings. There it is right there, the three drinks. But if you wanted an empty array, to make an empty array, you'd say this, var teams array of string equals a new array of string. Now here again, the type annotation is not required, but you still need to know an array of strings is written as square brackets with a string inside, so you can make the thing. So you either have the right-hand side or the left-hand side you can choose. Remember, those open and close parentheses in there, that they're important when you make empty arrays because that's where we customize options. When you pass in Coke, Pepsi, Iron Brew, there are no options, you're saying, here's my array. But here, with the, with the open and close parens version, you can customize it if you want to. Now, some people prefer to use different syntax again. They prefer to say this, var cities array of string equals open and close brackets by itself. So an empty array does exactly the same thing. I personally prefer to use type inference as much as possible. So I'd write var clues equals a new array of strings. So that's, those last three all do exactly the same thing. Make me a new empty array of strings. Question is, do you want type inference and the new string, or type inference and empty brackets, or no type uh, annotation, sorry, and a new array of strings? There are options, basically. Choose one that works best for you, the one you like the most. As well as all these, there are enums. Now, enums are a little different bit up from the others because they create new types all of our own, and this means you can have an enum containing days of the week, or which UI theme the user wants, or 
which screen the current users looking at you know on the screen it's, it's down to you and values of enums have the same type annotation as the enum itself and so if we go to xcode we can write some code like this we could say there's an enum called ui style with cases for light dark and system are three possible options and when it comes to using that i'll say our style is ui style dot light now this is uh, assigning UI style light to our style uh, value down here and it means that uh, Swift can now let us remove the enum name for future assignments we can just write things like style equals dot dark because it has the type UI style this thing here this style must be some kind of ui style so we can skip off writing ui style dot dark ui style dot system again and again it knows it's a ui style so that's type annotation if you want to you could say there's going to be coming out now ui style you can say i want to make it definitely a string definitely a set whatever it's down to you but there's a very good chance you'll be asking yourself when should you use type annotations so it's probably helpful to know that from my perspective, I prefer to use type inference as much as possible, uh, meaning that I assign a value to the thing when I want to use it. And Swift will choose the correct type automatically and it'll get, get it right most of the time. If it doesn't get it quite right, I might write score equals 0, 0.0. If I really want a double in there, for example, rather than just doing zero. Um, the most common exception to this is with constants, that I don't have a value for just yet, either because I haven't decided it yet or it's being passed in from somewhere else. Because Swift is really, really clever here. Um, you can create a constant that does not have a value yet and pass that in later on. So make it have its value later on. And Swift will ensure, guarantee, we don't accidentally use the constant before it has a value. And it'll also ensure once it has a value, it can't be changed. So it is still completely constant. For example, I could say something like, uh, let username be some kind of string, then do lots of complex logic in my program, lots of code, and then uh, username equals at two straws, and then lots more complex logic, and then finally print username. And that's perfectly fine. It's still a constant. We can't write to it more than once. This is legal code. What we're saying is username will contain a string at some point, and we're going to provide a value before we actually use it, which is here, here's what's going to be. And then finally we use it. And if the assignment line, like line 29, was missing, Swift would be like, nope, you can't do it. You're not allowed this. You've got to initialize it, give it a value before you actually use it. Uh, and similarly, if you try to say, uh, no, I want to set username again to be uh, Taylor Swift 13, for example, we're reassigning the constant. Swift will be like, nope, I refuse. You only do that exactly once, not allowed. So Swift's very, very clever here in making sure our constant is still constant and safe. And as you can see, this kind of code requires a type annotation because with no initial value being assigned, Swift has no idea what kind of data username is going to be. If you're going to tell it, it's going to be a string at some point. Now, regardless of whether you end up using type inference or type annotation, there is one golden rule sitting behind it all. Swift must know at all times which data types your constants and variables contain. It must. This is at the core of being a type-safe language, and it stops us from doing things like five plus true, for example. Uh, and it, that's a single golden rule. It's got to know at all times the types of all your data. Now, in case you're wondering, uh, although type annotation lets us override Swift's type inference to a degree, our finished code must still be possible, must still be feasible. For example, uh, this kind of code is not allowed. Uh, let scores int equals zero, right? But Swift cannot convert the string zero to an integer, even with a type annotation requesting it. 
as an int over here. So the code simply won't build.